Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Wisconsin Regional. Checking in team number 1714. Well, what's better than robotics? More, more robotics. robotics. Yes. That's right, more robotics have been absolutely phenomenal for many years as well, too. Take a look at Lake Superior uh, win just a couple weeks ago, and they're doing quite well here at the Wisconsin Regional as we're filming this as well. Take a look at 1714 as we go through. They got a really nice intake. I love the compactness of this robot. Of course, we're talking about their intake arm elevator, uh, and then some cool stuff with their code as well, too, their position control, uh, and something unique that they've done for their encoders. Let's talk more about more robotics on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Let's start uh, negotiating through this robot here. Miguel, we're gonna start out with the uh, elevator on this robot. You know, when I watch you on the field, it just seems like you're just so smooth and quick during that. Notice you got some chains in it. Talk about what's gone into the composition of your elevator and how did you get there as well? So our, our elevator is powered by a Neo that drives this shaft here. The shaft uh, pulls the chain and launches it up. So it's also got some constant force springs so that it like, it's like uh, it retains force, you know, it makes it nicer on the chains, makes it smoother. It's the, we, uh, we got our design idea from robots from the past. So we had to uh, combine the elevator and the intake system. So we connected it here. Uh, it's very nice, very nice. When you're looking uh, from the overall superstructure creating this, uh, like I said before, your robot's super compact uh, in that uh, what made you go like this route versus having like a taller superstructure or anything like that? So we decided to have it compact because if we have it too high, the center of balance is going to be way wonky and it might be easier to tip it over. So we want to keep it short, keep it stable, keep it nice. Let's continue on the robot. Uh, Alex, talk to me more about the uh, arm that you have here uh, as well too. And maybe we can showcase some of that moving as well. Uh, as you kind of connect in there as well, more gear and chain with that, but uh, interested to hear more about the tubes and the structure that's going with that and how you got there. Um, when it came to our arm, we decided to go with an arm on an elevator because we decided that with how our frame perimeter was and how we want it to be, uh, we're 24 by 24, that we would not have enough room to fit just a single like pink arm style robot. Um, and we decided that a slanted elevator with an arm would be the best bet for us, um, as well as because we knew that the second we saw the charge station, tall robot syndrome would be a killer. Um, so we decided that staying low to the ground with a slanted elevator style and not having anything sticking out the back would be a good idea. When it came to the actual design of the arm, we knew that we wanted uh, a way to use chain would allow us to essentially extend out while keeping the arm level at all times. Um, the idea be behind the cubes is that we had some polycarb tubing laying around in the shop and we just tried to break it and we couldn't. And we decided that having something like this with two tubes next to each other would be strong, uh, lightweight, and keep our arm nice and uh, smooth, um, which kind of came down. Um, it came from uh, Moore's roots of being all polycarb, the fact that we just had that kind of laying around, um, which we thought was really convenient for us. So as you can see throughout that whole process, that arm does not jank around or anything. Um, these chain tensioners up here really help with that because, uh, and these 3D prints. The 3D prints, right, this 3D print right here, is what keeps the arm from flang, flailing around in front of the robot. Uh, that's kind of what happened to us at week zero. Sure. Um, so that addition and uh, these 3D prints up here keep the arm nice, level, straight, um, and I guess moving as we want it to. And this just looks like PLA, right? It's like yep. no, nothing special just in particular. Just PLA plus. Right? That's awesome, yep. man. That's so cool to see. JP, let's talk about the uh, intake uh, on your robot here. You know, I was watching more robotics on the field. It just seems like uh, even with this width, just able to get cones every single time really consistently as well too. So talk to me what's gone into this and how it functions as well. Um, well, we took, we we knew we wanted a roller intake. Yeah. We also wanted a way to sort of confirm the score of our cones. Um, so the way that we do it is we have these pneumatic actuators here that are able to open and close. Uh, this allows us to close when we want to pick up a cone and then 
the intake reels were rolling, pick up the cone. Can we and see then, a cone come in actually and we'll kind of showcase that? Sure. So we get intake. So that grabs on really good. Oh, that's really well in there. Yes. Yeah. And so then we'll we have a stow ability, so we stow away and then we get to the get to the the grid. Um we have we're able to uh, release the pneumatic uh, actuators and that allows us to confirm the score as opposed to just rolling the wheels and it flinging out. So it's a more of a consistent way to score cones. Let's talk about positional control a little bit more uh, on the robot here and we'll kind of showcase uh, some of the uh, different uh, areas for it. And then I'd love to hear, uh, Sam, a little bit about, uh, you mentioned earlier, you did something a little bit different with your encoders and your thread drive modules too, so talk to me more about that. Of course, yeah. Um, I'm going to start from the bottom to the top. Uh, on the bottom, if you look here, our encoders uh, that we use on our Mark IV-I swerve drives from Swerve Drive Specialties, uh, they're not the normal ones that are generally used by teams. Most teams use the CTRE CAN coders, and they're digital uh, encoders that can be set to absolute, or relative, more preferably absolute, um, and they will all work, uh, work great. Uh, but we did not have access to those when we were in the beginning of designing this robot. So we instead had to use analog encoders again for, uh, instead from ThriftyBot. So what we did is we got um, ThriftyBot absolute uh, anal ThriftyBot analog encoders and used them as absolute encoders. Wow! And we had to rewrite software on top of the already, on top of like uh, Team 364 Swerve library. Yep. We had to take their their library and then adapt it, add more onto it, in order to work with the uh, analog encoders. Uh, so we spent a lot of time on that and. We are we're planning on like publishing that so that other teams, if you if you want to use the uh, analog encoders instead, you could you're more than welcome to do so and use our code as a basis. Um, on to the next thing, uh, we use these lights right here uh, to not only just to look good. We have blue for because that's our team color, but uh, we also use them to communicate with our human player. So if we want to get a uh, cone, for example, we would flash yellow. Trigger. So yeah, if we want to do. We would we flash yellow for cone. If we wanted a cube, we do the other one for purple. Oh, for purple, for purple real quick. There we go. So we can always communicate with them. Um, on to the next thing. Um, uh, under, uh, sorry, on to the next thing. Uh, we actually use a uh, positional system that works both with the elevator and with the arm at the same time. So um, we have preset positions for each one in different areas. So if we go to our low position, like our ground position, we'll go ahead and press the A, bu a button. Uh, so it'll move, the, it'll run a sequential command to get it here because if we just move, normally it's gonna hit right here. So sure. it's gonna go up with the elevator, out with the arm, and then down with the elevator. Uh, but if we go to our middle position, it's gonna move that, uh, it's gonna run that sequence to get to our middle, both, uh, using both the elevator and the arm here. And if we use, uh, press Y for our high position, it goes all the way up, does the same thing from there. It also has routines in the robot to get like have the best uh, method of getting there, like the fastest uh, way of getting there as opposed to the same one every time. Sure. Um, and that all depends on where, what position you're trying to get to. Um, another thing that we have is we also have manual control over them if we so wish to with our joysticks. You can go ahead and highlight that. So we can move it on our own if we want to, if things go bad with our positioning. Um, uh, another thing that uh, that we use that I would like to uh, highlight specifically is our our driver camera up here. We use this to get constant feedback on the driver station. To uh, do, that way, if we're lining up for the loading station, the drivers can look at the camera and know exactly where they are and orient themselves so that they are in a correct position. So when we generally pick up a piece, uh, can I have that cone for a second? So if we go to our loaded position, which is a separate position right here. Oh, that's not, I'm sorry, wrong one. There we go. Um, this one is specifically tailored to the double substation. So we put our cone in here and we close it. And now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna drive back a little bit, but we don't have to do that. And then we, we stow it right here. So we press the stow button. It will stow it right here where we go to our, let me go to the, uh, the uh, the uh, scoring stations, and then we go to whatever level we want. So let's say we go to high, and then we are just once we once we get there, we have a button to then confirm our score. So if you press this button right here, 
it will actually move it down so that it actually inserts into the peg. So, okay, can you press this button when I tell you to? So if this, my arm is a peg, it will actually lower it onto me. Go ahead. Hold it, hold it. All right, and then release it when ready. So hold it, go, go to front floor, and then release it. Well, more robotics, really appreciate you taking the time to tell us more about your uh, robot here. Uh, you got a slick looking bot, it's performing great so far. Uh, so we wish you best of luck here at the Wisconsin Regional. Of course, uh, even further down, we'll see you at the World Championship. Thank you very lot, much. Man. It was a pleasure to, pleasure to be on the show. Thanks, guys. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash FIRST updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.